Amen. We're just going to go into the Word of God. So today, I'm, I'm starting a new series of teaching on the Word of God. I'm starting a new series on the Word of God. And I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really pumped. I'm really pumped that we get to discuss such a powerful topic. I, I, where do we start from today? Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 109. Psalm 109 in verse 105. Psalm 109 in verse 105. Okay, Psalm 109 in verse 105. And today, the title of the teaching is Receiving Light in Dark Seasons. I, I don't know about you, but when you go through this world, there will be times where it's really dark. What is a dark season? A dark season for a businessman can look like this. Where you're believing God for some kind of um, opening in business, and it's going so well and everywhere becomes a required. And you've done everything. You've spoken to the person you know. You've told in the right papers you need to turn in. You've done your strategy work. But for some reasons, you can, you can tell that something is wrong, but you don't know what it is. You can tell that something is happening, but you don't know what it is. And that's just a dark season. Sometimes, sometimes it will be someone that has a health challenge. And the doctors have done everything they know how to do for you. But there's just a huge dark season. There's just a huge dark season. One of the painful things about dark season is this. We begin to question everything we believe. We begin to question what we know and what we don't know. What we believe and what we don't believe. We just ask all those kind of questions. Those are dark seasons. Very dark seasons for everyone. Sometimes a dark season is that you thought you were going to have this great investment and you did the investment and you lost all the money. And you're wondering that what exactly happened? I thought I was going to make more money by doing this. Now even the capital I have, have lost it. And the question is this, how do you receive light in dark season? How do you receive light? And I know that a lot of people love to pray, but I believe that prayer is more effective when you pray with light. I believe, and that's what I know. I, I know a lot of people love to pray, but prayer is more effective when you get to pray with light. Glory to God. And of course, when we speak about light, in the context of our study today, light is God's word. We're praying with the word of God, having the revelation of the word of God. Glory to God. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. I said Psalm 119, Psalm 19 verse 105. He says, thy word, thy word is lamp unto my part, unto my feet. He says, thy word is lamp unto my feet and is a light unto my part two things he says here one you know you must notice how the bible is constructed sometimes the bible you use an image to teach us something powerful so he says the word is what lamp unto my feet so when i'm taking my step the reason why i will not stumble is because i have light in my step he says but it's also light unto my part talking about direction so, one part of the word talks about illumination, another part of the word talks about direction. The beautiful thing is this, the way the word of God is, you know, in a very religious way, when I got born again, I used to think, when you read the Bible, you just think about God. But, I've discovered that whatever you're going through, if you take time to study the Bible, and you have a question in your heart and you study by faith that God can speak into you from that place I'll, I'll give an example one time I was I was praying for our church and saying Lord where's the next phase and what are we doing and all of that and I was reading the Bible and the Bible says that and this was about the miracle of multiplication the Bible says and Jesus took the bread and he broke it and distributed it and god said I, I mean i was reading my bible but i was asking questions so let me say this quickly why do people read the bible and never find anything they never go into the bible study with specific desires bible study profits when you have specific desire and first as you approach bible study so as i was reading that i read that you'll be surprised how god can connect things to you I'm praying about multiplication. The Bible says he took the bread and multiplied it. And God said, can you see what happened there? He said, what you do is that if you want it to multiply, take the church, create other churches, multiply the churches. Ah. He says, did you notice something? He took the bread. 
he didn't complain it was not enough he multiplied he broke it he said the first thing to do was to break it so that time we're doing one services he said break it into two i said start two services i said thank you jesus then he went for that i said don't only break it break the church itself start another church he said but see the thing that happened there the bread did not multiply in the hands of the master when you get other people to pastor the churches the bread will multiply are you getting this very powerful very very powerful so you know what i call it one time one time i was praying lord this is about finance and this and this and this and this and god says what do you have in your house and i said what do you mean he said until you see what you have in your house you cannot see the finance because there are many of you there you know many of you don't even realize that your financial journey is going to start with what you have you know what the Bible says? The Bible says God gives seed to the sower. That means that that means no matter what God wants you to do, He gives you a seed first. Uh, uh, traditionally, the seed means to sow money. That's the one I'm talking about. It gives you an idea. It gives you a concept. It gives you an opportunity. It gives you a seed first. So there's something about going into the Word of God, and it can speak into your everyday living. I mean, you know, in the way I pastor, I have a lot of single ladies. So I had to go into the Bible and say, Father, single ladies, how would they get married? I have to search in the word. And I was shocked. Most single ladies in the Bible, they got married because of act of service and kindness. Let's start. Rebecca. Rebecca saw a slave. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Remember that Rebecca was from a rich family. So just imagine as you are here, you see a beggar as a, as a beautiful lady. And the beggar said, please feed him. And the beggar took her time. Fed the slaves. The animals of the slaves. You know how much water one camel drinks? There were about over 10 camels. She took them and fed all of them. I'm not sure she was in her mind saying that, ah, maybe this guy can toast it. Because this is a slave. But she didn't realize that an act of kindness can lead somewhere. Our own generation said unto you, you are naked on Instagram, you can't find a husband. Acts of kindness. How did Ruth find a husband? There were two of them, Ruth and Opa. Opa returned back. Ruth says, let me keep serving you. As he kept serving, they will tell you, uh, single lady, go and serve in Joseph, I don't have time. You are just playing with what you get. Because what you are looking for is not where you are looking for it. Are you hearing me? Yes, this is very powerful. One time I was telling, one time I was praying for business people, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Show me how the business people will make more money. Because, I, and when I pray like that, and this is the thing, most of us are just praying, 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 praying. Mm -mm. You need to learn how to pray revelation with light. So the Bible says that God showed me. He said, when it was time for him to pay taxes, and they didn't have cash, he told Peter, go back to the fish. You know, Peter was a fisherman. He said, but when you get back to the fish, open the mouth of the fish. There's money inside. I said, what does that mean? He said, tell the businessmen to go back to their business. There's a, there is what? There's something in their business that can produce more money than what they're doing right now. What does that mean? And he opened my eyes. Apple started with what? Selling what? What did they start with? Computers? Computers. What is making more money? Phone or computer? Why? There's something in Apple that is more, that is more will give more breakthrough than the computer. They started the business by selling computer. But now they are making more money by phone. Peter started by selling fish. But for him to make more money, all God had to do was to open the mouth of the fish. There's something inside. And God showed me again. Genesis chapter 1. He said, the way I design seed, each seed has seed in itself. Meaning that if the business is a seed, there's a seed in the business also. Why? God is not a God of termination. When it starts something, it starts with the future in mind. So what you do has all that potential inside. Someone say, how do you see this? Because as I go into the word of God, I'm, as I go into the word of God, I see it. I never learned savings. I learned savings from the word of God. I'm telling you. And it was from Proverbs. The Bible says, a foolish man, a foolish man spends all things. He didn't say that you spend all things because you are in Nigeria. He didn't say you spend all things because you live, uh, it's not enough. He said you spend all things because you are foolish. That means if you are not saving, you are a biblical fool. Ah. 
those were harsh realities I had to confront. So it was not about that. My man called doc. He was just reading the Bible. Didn't you? And many of you will you will save money and give to someone that does not save. Don't be an idiot. You will save money. Then someone that does not save his own money will come and borrow the money from you. I will never pay you back. Read Matthew 25. When the foolish person that were foolish came to me, the wise person that saved their own oil. When they say, give us oil, they say, we are sorry. Go and buy. There's money for benevolence. There's money for savings. Uh -huh. So if I deny myself to save my future, that's not the money I borrow you. The money I borrow you is the one I know that is benevolence. The easiest way to lose friends is to say, is to borrow their money. I hope you know that. So if you're like me, I don't borrow. I give what I can. I mean, this is how I can help you. You don't trust me. I trust you. But so we don't have problems. Because of that trust that I love, that I don't want it to break, let me give you. Apart from that, the Bible says, old man, no, nothing. Let me help you obey the scriptures by not owing me what? Nothing. Are, are you here, somebody? But the key thing is that how do I receive all of those things? Questions. So you see some people say, um, you know, this is it. the reason why your Bible study is boring is because first of all, you even have the mentality that the word of God cannot speak to your situation. That's why it's boring. How do you receive from the word of God? The first thing is to realize that the word of God, the Bible is the way God speaks to us. That's how he illuminates our mind. Why am I saying so? When you're going through a very dark season, if you can take time, listen to me. The problem is that this is the reason why spiritual things don't work. I want to pay attention. This is the reason why spiritual things don't work. People do it and they're expecting some microwave kind of reaction. I do it for two days and I see results. Listen, if spiritual thing is going to work, it's going to work with consistency. And you just keep going back. I don't know why it's like that. You just keep going back. You just keep going back and until you hit the breakthrough. Psalm 119. Let me show you something quickly. Verse 9 to 9. Psalm 119 verse 9 to 9. See what David said. David said, I have... So all of you in business, I want you to watch this. Listen to me. You cannot be reading the words of the most intelligent person and your intelligent question does not increase. On a daily basis, you cannot be spending quality time reading the word of the most intelligent person and you'll be making foolishness, making foolish decisions. No. Your intelligent quotient will increase because who you spend time with rubs on you. Moses only spent 40 days with him. His face changed. You can't spend a year in the world and your mind will not change. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. See what David said. David said, I have more understanding than my teachers. Why? Because your testimonies, when he said testimony, it means his word, has become my meditation. He said, this is what he was saying. When we get to the board meeting, and they say we should speak. When I open my mouth to speak, they wonder where I'm getting this from. Because this is not in the books. This is not what is taught. But these things are drawn from the what? From the river of meditation. I'm showing you what the power of God does. The, the major challenge is that, of course, religion destroys everything. So there's a religious way of thinking, you know, you know, uh, we're going to church, we're going to hear the word of God. <laughs> Someone said, ah, you have a book for Bible study. Why won't I have a book? When I listen to wisdom every day, won't I write? How much can I remember? There are things I write because this is afresh. The day I learned about branding and marketing the Bible, I was blown away. Hey! I read the Bible. Um, what do they call it? Come, 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 come. Jesse brought to Samuel. I'm Samuel. He said, This when Samuel saw Jesse to anoint as king, he looked at him. Top now, handsome. Look, look at every chest is standing well. 
He said, this is the Lord's anointed. And God told Samuel. He said, God is not man that looketh on the outward appearance. He said, God looks at the heart. And God told me, slow down. Read it again. God is not man that looketh on the outward appearance. Meaning that man looks on the outward. He said, if you want to get man's attention, do the packaging well. Are you getting it? First Samuel chapter 10. Let's, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Because some of you don't know, some of you are praying for that one breakthrough. It's not a matter of breakthrough. Angels know your product. Man need to know it. First Samuel chapter 10. Look at it. Chapter 15, rather. Sixteen, right? Sixteen, seven. See what the Bible says. Let's read from verse six. I want to read it because m- many of you don't understand this concept. And let me tell you something. This is why some of you are not married, though. The packaging. Because you, the, let me. Born again people will have funny concepts. Ah, I, I know why I'm on the inside. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, See, let me tell you. I know I'm a treasure. You are the one that knows. We need to know. Yes, because you will not marry yourself. Is that not true? When you see people putting their office in the Koyi, they wear suit to church. You will just some people come to church. You will wonder why are you dressing like this. Don't you understand? It's not just church, it's connection of people. And first impression matters. This thing is not what they teach you. This is Bible sense. See what the Bible says, verse 6. And it came to pass as they were come, he looked on Eliab. There were many of them. Why was he Eliab? Eliab was the most... Co- he, he had it. Executive presence. When he, when he got there, he said, Hi, he said, Hi, Prophet Samuel. How are you today? All everybody, chow, 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 chow. He said, This one cannot be kings. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Bible says he looked at Eliab. And Samuel said, Samuel was an anointed prophet that could see. He was a seer. He was so carried away. He didn't even pray. He said, surely. You lead a cell in a kiosk. You say that your cell is not growing. How will it grow? There are things that bring both to sell more than the word of God. He said, surely. This is the Lord's anointed. God had to call him and say, oh God, you have missed it. There's a way you package that spiritual people will be deceived. Surely this was anointed. And what did the Bible say? And the Lord, had to, the Lord had to step in because someone was going to take on and anoint him. He said, stop it. He said, Samuel, look not on his countenance or on his height of his stature because I've refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on outward appearance. Are you listening to me? This one that your business card looks like something they made in the village. I'm telling you, this one that your website looks like something that I'm not designed. I know you have substance, but before people see substance, they will look at the outward appearance. It doesn't matter what you carry. If your packaging is not well, you will destroy it. He says this. He says, for man look at on the outward, but God look at the heart. So when you keep saying that a single girl, I can't keep myself. God sees my heart. You will, God will marry you. Because the only person that sees heart to a point is God. Man looks from the head to toe and says, thank you, Jesus. So, so when, when Samuel saw him, he said, surely, because he saw him, he said, my God, this is the Lord's anointed. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Are you getting this today? So one of the reasons I'm sharing this is this is one of the reasons I'm sharing this. When you read the word of God, you will be surprised how much of answers to daily living that the word of God has for you. 
The reason why people don't gain from the word is, of God is this. This is why they don't gain. They go to this word of God with a religious feeling. So that I must read my Bible every day. So they go there. And it's a speed razor something. You know speed razor? He's a just... And someone said, Amen. Father, thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Because they are not reading to hear. They are reading for religious purposes. How do you go into the word of God to receive? The first thing is this. The first thing is prioritization. When something happens to you, you understand that the word has a solution. It must be in your mind. So when something happens to you, go into the word of God and say, Father, I know you have the answer because all wisdom belongs to you. All knowledge belongs to you. And as you begin to study, you will pray to God and say, open my eyes. Let me see this thing. And the skill will fall off your eyes. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's read Psalm 119 again. That was there. Psalm 119. Not Psalm 419. Psalm 119. Verse. It says, I have more understanding than my teachers because I've made your word my meditation. So this is why the word of God is powerful. Because the word of God will give you clear directions. It will give you clear directions. It will show you. See, the Oh my God. 105. Psalm 109 verse 105. He said, Thy word is la lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Can I have the light? Can I have the touch light? When you're, a, when you're in a dark season in your life, because of the state of your emotion, you will not be able to see things well. Because of the pressure of the fund you have to replay, of money, of the pressure of government, of change of policy, you may not see things well. So the Bible says the word is light. Can you turn on the light? So this is what the word is. Once you cannot see well, you take the word and go into areas. And you are going into that marital area and say, why am I still single? You are using the word to look at it. You bring everything under the microscope of the word. You bring it there. You look at you say, my God, ah, is this my mouth? I can't. Because sometimes it's so small you may not see it. So the word of God becomes the light that you begin to shine. You begin to shine. Like your business is not doing well. You shine the word. You shine the word. This is my business. As you are praying and reading the word, I'm shining the word. How come my marriage is not happy? You shine the word there. You look. Ah, what you, because you know why that? Because the word of God is perfect. You can turn on the light. Listen to me. Because we are human beings, we don't have perfect perspective. But when you bring in the word of God, it's perfect. It will show you this way you missed it. God bless you, my brother. Some things you are praying about, if you can see, you will stop praying. Oh my God. Let me tell you something there. Should I be honest with you? There are spiritual people around you. If you just tell them, this is my problem. They will tell you what to do to go forward. You are the one that does not know. Not everybody. There are people close to me that I know that they are not doing well in one area or the other. But when you tell them, they say you don't understand. I say, okay, that's true. And the reason why is that everybody has self-blindness. There are things you will not see because of just emotions. Because of attachments. But that's why the Bible says the word of God, Psalm 19 verse 7, it says the word of God is perfect converting the soul. So why you don't see you don't see well, you, you will just put it here. Sometimes when you sit down with someone and say, my brother, why not start saving? You say, pastor, you don't understand. This bond is not enough. Ah! And you explain it to you and you look at him explaining his foolishness. And, you know, without any sense of regard, foolishness just become out of man. You just be saying it, saying it, saying it. And you're like, wow. You say, okay. Because at the end of the day, is it not his life? It's his life. But the reason why you talk about that is that you cannot see. If people know better, they will do better. Sometimes you want to cancel someone about marriage. You tell him, be careful about this and this and this. They say, Pastor, ah, <laughs> the, the way they, they explain it. Hey, you just look. You say, I've married my own. I can't marry yours. The word of God is light. It, it's, you must understand. And the, the reason why the word of God is powerful is this. 
when I'm making the decision, I would always be emotionally unbalanced because I tilt towards something or tilt towards something else. But what makes me make the perfect decision is what the word of God says. The word is light. So many of you have to go home today and use the word to check. You don't know you're selfish because you have not checked by the word of God. Once you check, you will realize that you are very stingy. You compare. You, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you will know. Some of you don't know that you are not kind. Once you use the word of God to check, you say, "What? Check me, check me." You say, "Ah, I'm very, I'm, I'm not kind." Like some people have razor blade mouth. You know them, Abby. But they cannot come to that conclusion. Some of you, it's not, it's laziness. You don't know you're lazy. You know they're lazy. Lazy people don't know they're lazy. Oh. I've never seen a lazy person that says, Pastor, I know I'm lazy. No. Lazy people always think they're hardworking. And yet, they sleep 15 hours every day. If they don't sleep 15, they will sleep for 10. Watch TV and do social media for another 6. And they now wonder why they are poor. Are you here, somebody? But the thing is that when they examine themselves, you'll be surprised... Let me ask you. Let me just say this here. How many of you know lazy people that don't know they're lazy? Wave your hands now. I'm not saying you. <laughs> I say, how many of you know lazy per- someone that is lazy that does not know is lazy? Raise up your hands if you know them like that. I know loads of people that way. And when you talk to them, they never, it never even occurs to them that they're lazy. And the reason why is the picture. Sometimes you want someone, someone to get to the marriage and you want to talk to him, they want to date. You're like, well, the way I see it, I don't think you're emotionally stable yet. I don't think you've recovered from the last relationship. You say, Pastor, I've recovered. Don't I know myself? You don't. You don't. Glory to God. So one of the things the word of God does for us is this. The word of God provides illumination. The word of God provides illumination. For example now, Many people are very fearful. You will not know until you examine God's word. You will not know you are very fearful. You will, not, you will just find out that when they say do this, like for example, some people, their response to any responsibilities will run away. Sometimes it's a manifestation of fear. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. The question we want to ask is this. So, so, so this is why the word of God is powerful. Because the word of God provides illumination. Illumination. There are certain things you will not see. Except God shows you. And that's why you come to church and you hear things that challenge you. It's God. What is God doing? God is flashing lights. Oh, God is flashing lights. Someone say, you just hear something. Pah! You just, hmm. God is flashing light on you. Yeah, he is flashing light at you. It's flashing lights. Yeah. For those online, it's flashing light at you. <laughs> Glory to God. How does it flash light? A revelation will come. Something will come that will challenge the way you think. It will just challenge the way you think about something. It will challenge the way you think. Like this is about savings right now. He challenged you. He will just challenge your perspective about being negative. He will just challenge you. He will challenge your perspective about you just being a giver, a generous soul in your life. He will just challenge you. And every time he challenges you, you can have a two options, either to dodge it or to accept it. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Can God's word be trusted? Yes. How do I know? Let's look at just some basic things that shows God. I'll start from natural things to spiritual things. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22. Can God's word be trusted? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22. Hey, next level tomorrow will be very hot. I hope you're getting ready. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22. Let's read. The Bible says, want to go. Let's go ahead. Want to go? Those at home, want to go? It is he that what? Seated upon what? Hold on. He sits upon what? Question. Did you do geography? Geography. The scientists long time ago believed that the world was rectangular. 
they didn't agree from ages god had always said the word of the world is what secular as a matter of fact christopher columbus that did the world touring said it was this scripture that inspired him that 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 the world is not rectangular that the world is secular the the word of god aligns science aligns with the word of god so all the while they were doing experiment and aristotle was saying that well i think the world is secular we are known from way from the word of god how do we know because the bible said god sits upon the circle of the earth glory to god i said glory to god Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 i, I want to just show you two or three scientific facts that will help you with the word of god oh Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 you know when you're sick right now when you go to the hospital what's the first thing they ask you to go and do huh blood test right yeah but yeah but the first one before the mri came on it was first what blood test yes or no the first they ask you the blood test but where did that start? Was that how hospital was 20 years ago? No. But guess what? This is over 6,000 years ago. See what the Bible says. For the life of the flesh is what? In the blood. Meaning that when something is wrong with the flesh, check the blood. Blood tests had always been in the Bible. He said for the life of the... The scientists caught up later. And say, okay, when the body is wrong, let's check the blood. For, let me tell you, in the old medicine... When you're sick, you know what they do? The tradition was to de-blood you. They will remove blood from your system. That was how they used to treat people. When you're sick, just remove the blood. That is dirty blood that is causing it. No, but God's word has always told us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. The Bible had prophesied that no matter what happened to Israel, that Israel will come back to their own state. They will come back as a people and come back to Jerusalem. And that happened when 19 what? 19 what? 48 when israel came back to the to the holy city so even in history the bible is one of the most accurate books did you see all of those things one of the most accurate books i can keep telling you stories and stories and stories in case you don't know all sheep and boats today are made to pattern like the the, the, um, the, the ark of noah noah's ark everything the diamond everything is made to pattern like noah's ark Show the accuracy of the word of God. Everything patterns of the new ark. Can the word of God be trusted? So I've given you medical facts. I've given you historical facts. I've given you prophetic facts that shows the Bible is true. But what does God's word say about itself? Psalm 119. Same Psalm 119 again. Verse 89. Psalm 119 verse 89. See what the Bible says. Oh glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 19 verse 89. He says forever O oh Lord. Thy word is what? He says, God's word does not change. Matthew 25 says that heaven and earth may pass away. He said, my word will never pass away. The reason I'm saying this to you, he says, if God has said something about you, Joy, if he has said something to you, Ugo, if he has said something to you, Kingsley, if he has said something to you, Aki, if he has said something to you, Chantel, if he has said it to you, Laquita, he will make it happen. He says his word will not pass away. Somebody say, I believe it. Why? Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. I heard what the doctors are saying about your body. But what God, oh my God. Pastor, you come quickly. Amanaka, bring your wallet as you're coming. Oh, glory to God. Pastor, Pastor, you have your wallet here? If you have your wallet, just, just bring, give someone's wallet. Come quickly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have a wallet? Yeah, come quickly. Oh, um, come, my assistant. You yeah, come, 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 come. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, you have to open the wallet. Just make sure there's some money inside. You know, what? It doesn't matter how much TVs want. I just come over here. Yeah. If three of us ate in a restaurant, and and all of a sudden he comes and he says, "How much is the bill?" and settles him. He doesn't matter who ordered the food. He doesn't matter when it was ordered we can all relax because it is what settled god says god's word is what settled he has settled it concerning your health 
he has settled it concerning your job he has a matter no they say your children will not do what you say you don't understand forever oh lord thy word he settled if we are going right now can he come and hold us back try to hold us back come come you say oh god we don't settle you now why are you holding us now when the devil says that your child will not do well you say satan you lie because you have been settled when he says your business will not do well you say satan you lie because you have been settled how do I know I have been settled? The word said so. He says, I'm like a tree planted all oh, by the rivers of water that bears its fruit in season. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Doctors say we see a certain disease. You said the Bible says there shall none be barren in the land. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his choice uh, we are healed it has been what settled somebody say it has been settled somebody say it has been settled someone say nigeria is going to crumble everything is going to crumble but this is what the bible says uh, when men say there's a casting now he said we shall say there is a lifting up it shall have been settled he said darkness oh satman help me with the microphone please uh, isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 see what the bible says uh, isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 they look at you they say you're a small business they say you're a small fry it's okay but the bible says uh, though my beginning may be small my latter end shall make it my latter end shall be exceedingly great i know i'm doing just ten thousand today and i'm doing just one million today but look out for me look out for me don't my beginning of a small my latter end shall be exceedingly great shout amen hey. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 why are you trying to hold me brother it has been settled glory to God when the, de when the devil is holding your contract look at him and say satan it has been settled when he's trying to hold your marriage say satan it has been settled see what the bible says isaiah chapter 60 verse 2 i don't know if you can hear this this morning he said behold darkness shall cover the earth he said cross darkness shall cover the people he said things will get so bad things will get so tough things will get so bad he said there is a pot what is a pot the Lord shall arise upon thee his glory shall be seen on thee the Lord shall arise upon thee his, his glory shall be seen on thee shall I receive it thank you I understand what they are saying about Nigeria. I understand what they are saying about inflation. I understand what they are saying about a global recession. But God already told me. I'm not shocked. Listen, the Bible is news more current than the news. The Bible is news more current than the news. Oh, glory to God. He said in the last days, which we are in, the whole darkness shall cover the earth. There will be increase in divorce. There will be increase in hardship. There will be increase in sickness. There will be increase in poverty. He said darkness shall cover the earth. Things will become very difficult. It's going to be a global phenomenon. He said darkness shall cover the earth. And cross darkness, multiply darkness of people. He said but for you. He said but for you. The Lord shall arise upon you. And is oh yeah, gosh, it is. He didn't say it's shame. He said his glory shall be seen upon you. I declare over you that his glory will be seen on your children. It will be seen on your work. It will be seen on your business. In the name of Jesus, you will not see shame. You will not see shame. You will not see shame. All you will see is glory. Shall I receive it?
Praise God. Can we close this this morning? Say forever, O oh Lord. Thy word is settled. Come back, come back. All the guys, come back, please. All the ministers, come back that I was using. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Settle it, sir. You've settled it. Watch this. But if I don't know it's settled, when he holds me back, then I'll begin to say, Oga, let me make a phone call. Oga, let me look for my ATM. Not because it's not settled, because I do not know it is settled. The reason why the devil has been holding your job is because you do not know it has been settled. He's been holding your health. He said, let, I, I, let me go. You don't let him go because you did not know it's been settled. But once you call headquarters and headquarters say it has been paid, you say, Where is the receipt? They bring out the Bible. They said, This is the receipt. The man that's been holding me, I said, Let me go. Stop holding me. Get off me. Leave me alone. This is the receipt. It has been settled. This is the receipt. My health has been settled. This is the receipt. My joy has been settled. This is the receipt. My peace. This is the receipt. It has been settled. Somebody just settled. Praise God. We are not afraid of tomorrow because it has been settled. How do I know it has been settled? Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. He says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with me. It doesn't matter if it's APC or PDP or obedient. Anyone it is, either we are obedient or articulate. Anyone it is, it is well. Stand on your feet, lift up your hands and pray. Declare that it is settled. Hallelujah. Declare it is settled.